the second arc of Persona 5 Royal focuses on a problem entirely outside of the Phantom themes. Kamoshida was pretty much central to every single party member that started our group, this of course barring Morgana, so tackling someone who's less central this time is a little bit interesting and very different. The first major thing done in this arc is the introduction of Mementos. It's a central dungeon for the rest of the game. Mementos is used as a simple dungeon where you drop down randomly generated floors to tackle various side quests. And thank god they changed the music. If you didn't know this, and I'm going to be doing little trivia bits here and there, in Vanilla Persona 5, the music for Mementos was this. For, for the whole time. This dungeon's pretty long and you're gonna be here a lot during the main game. This is also the first time you hear Madarame's name, which is why I'm mentioning it now. What about Madarame? He stole everything from me, but you're letting him off the hook? The end of your visit to Mementos also introduces someone mysterious who may or may not be relevant. Oh, who could this be? Surely they didn't show us already in the promotional material. We're slandering you with baseless rumors. The first time we meet Madarame, he's actually not even the focus of the cutscene. If it wasn't for the game showing us his picture first in the interrogation room, we wouldn't even know it was him. In this cutscene, Yusuke is introduced trying to approach An, and Madarame is dropped in there. This isn't a special thing to do, but it makes you aware of the connection between the two characters. All the wacky hijinks aside, the rest of the week is pretty much dedicated to you trying to get details out of Yusuke. I've seen some people say that this uses up way too much time, but I'll be honest, I'd much rather have a structured narrative around collecting information than whatever the hell Persona was trying to do in 2008 with Persona 4. Eventually, we reach a point of entering Madarame's palace, which I'll talk about more later. Our group continues to try to get Yusuke to cough up the truth, and through an absolutely ridiculous plan filled with bad acting, like, quiet, <laughs> you know, where we won't get interrupted. Is he really going to buy that terrible act? We managed to jump past our obstacles and bring Yusuke into the Phantom Thieves. Come. Go on! My usual ragged attire is nothing but an act. My personal opinion of this palace is that it's kind of boring and kind of ugly. For reference, I've always found that gold weapons in any game tend to be gaudy and bland. But over the years, I've come to realize maybe that's the intention of Madarame's palace. The early stages might represent the shack. It's a drab and boring disguise for Madarame. It serves as a home to all of his patrons, hence why the paintings of his pupils are within the first chunk of the palace. This dyed blue area of the palace really only stays around until you reach the first barrier, where the game forces you to leave the dungeon. Where? Oh, right! There's no mistaking it! That's the same door I saw earlier! Behind this locked door is where Madarame makes his fortune. It's interesting to think about, but once you pass the security system, you pretty much only encounter this gaudy gold coloring everywhere. The fortune Madarame has built is showcased through a disgustingly high amount of gold walls and objects, and his palace isn't beautiful, it's hideous. In a way, it's similar to Madarame's outer appearance versus his inner personality. The concept of showing off your students' work in a museum or even a gallery isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, claiming it as your own and making a fortune off of it turns you into a monster. My point is essentially that it feels like this dungeon is pretty well thought out. The bland and gaudy design is actually kind of purposeful. That was when I disobeyed Madarame's orders and left. So I think my issue with this arc, or my main problem, is that Madarame is actually barely used. He gets very little screen time for being the main villain of this arc. He appears a few times, but the main focus is really Yusuke. How many did you trample upon? How many dreams did you exchange for riches? And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does make him a much less impactful villain. Madarame's crimes are not things we can forgive. Art theft is problematic, and taking credit and making money off of someone else's work is not cool. But I think where Madarame fails is in his other crimes. The art theft is shown off pretty well. 
I can't tell if it's intentional, but there isn't really a point where you get to see the real effects of Madarame's actions outside of him being a thieving little weasel. He pretty much admits to leaving Yusuke's mother to die, and Nakanohara tells us about the student who tried to kill themselves, and Yusuke's words. I actually spoke to him a few times back when I was still living at Madarame's. I asked him if he found it painful to stay with Madarame. And you know what he said? If I could leave, I would. Remember when I said that sometimes you need to use telling over showing? I don't need to see any of this. But I kind of wish that they did some level of showing as opposed to just a full-on exposition dump about, oh, the bad effects of Madarame's actions. And that's kind of why I don't feel like Madarame is as good of a villain. It feels like he's a bit more of a development device for our new eccentric party member, Yusuke. No matter what it takes, I will bring you to justice! Oh! I didn't bring any money. Yusuke is difficult to get a grasp on. We're essentially told one thing while he acts the other, and his first two appearances are a little bit creepy. Preposterous! Not only is the plagiarism impossible, but abuse? However, as we get to know him, he turns out to be someone who really just is another person who's been taken advantage of. He's a much more complex and interesting character than just, haha, I'm weird, quirky, and silly. His drive and passion for art make him give up things, even his own health, for the craft. It's as impressive as it is dangerous. But I've really come to like him a lot for what he adds to the party dynamic, as well as his social life. My clothes change. You just noticed that now? I am the supreme being. I am the god of the art world. Madarame's original boss fight in Vanilla Persona 5 is pretty much just this phase over and over. In P5R, they dive into the idea more of him being nothing more than a copycat. His first phase is him as his master artwork, but once you shred it to bits, he unveils his ability to make copies of himself. Though, instead of them being the same as him, they have some imperfections. And as he gets more and more desperate, his clones become less and less efficient. What? I, the great Madarame, made an error? And I do like this boss fight, because unlike Kamoshida's, which is kind of a traditional hit him as hard as you can, this one takes advantage of Persona's weaknesses and one more system, making it way more of an interesting experience. What about the other one, though? The one with the black mask? This arc ends with more questions. Madarame brings up another metaverse user, someone in a black mask. He doesn't talk about it much, and the palace begins to collapse, so he doesn't have a chance to talk about it further, but it does make you start to question things. All. Still, the incident about this other intruder does concern me a little. Finally, he confesses his sins on a live broadcast to the world with a few faces that are skeptical of the Phantom Thieves. Phantom Thieves again. The arc ends with the shot of your group walking away and the student council president of Shujin watching over your group. So the second arc of Persona 5 Royal is okay. I'm not especially in love with it, but I'm not against it either. I think it holds up pretty well despite being not my favorite. At worst, I think it just needs to show me a bit more of Madarame. It's another early arc, and therefore is setting up a lot of pieces for your future endeavors. So if I'm gonna set up a tier list for this, and the one in my original P5R review is just Palace gameplay. So Madarame's goes here, and Kamoshida's goes here. And if you want to stay tuned for my future arc reviews, you can subscribe to the channel down here. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and comment down below your thoughts on Madarame's arc. Do you think my thoughts on his palace are accurate? Or do you think it's maybe not that deep? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.